In this video, we focus on the proposed $3,200 payment for seniors who receive Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and VA benefits. We'll explain the details of this proposal, including who might be eligible and how it could provide financial relief for those in need. You'll also learn about the current status of the proposal, how close it is to being approved, and the possible timeline for when payments could be distributed. We will also cover what this proposal could mean for your monthly benefits and how it might impact your overall financial situation. Stay informed on the latest updates and how this potential payment could bring extra support for seniors across the country. In recent months, a buzz has been growing around a potential $3,200 proposal aimed at benefiting seniors and disabled Americans who rely on various government assistance programs. This proposed financial boost has captured the attention of millions of beneficiaries of Social Security, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI, and Veterans Affairs VA benefits. As the cost of living continues to rise and many Americans struggle to make ends meet, such a proposal could have far-reaching implications for some of the most vulnerable members of our society. In this comprehensive analysis, we will delve into the details of this proposed $3,200 payment, examine its potential impact on beneficiaries, explore the political landscape surrounding the proposal, and assess its chances of approval. We'll also look at the broader context of social safety net programs in the United States and consider how this proposal fits into ongoing debates about economic support for seniors and disabled individuals. The $3,200 proposal, as it's commonly referred to, is a suggested one-time payment or series of payments totaling $3,200 to individuals who receive benefits from Social Security, SSI, SSDI, or VA programs. While the exact details may vary depending on the source of the proposal, the general idea is to provide significant financial relief to these beneficiaries in recognition of the unique economic challenges they face. Based on the current understanding of the proposal, eligibility would likely include Social Security retirement beneficiaries, Supplemental Security Income SSI recipients, Social Security Disability Insurance SSDI beneficiaries, and veterans receiving VA disability or pension benefits. It's important to note that the exact eligibility criteria could be subject to change as the proposal moves through the legislative process, if it advances. The specific amount of $3,200 is noteworthy and may have been chosen for several reasons. It's a substantial sum that could make a real difference in the lives of beneficiaries. The amount is reminiscent of previous COVID-19 stimulus payments, which totaled $3,200 over three rounds, $1,200, $600, $1,400. It could be seen as a way to adjust for the impact of inflation on fixed incomes. Additionally, the amount may be a compromise figure that balances the desire to provide meaningful support with budgetary constraints. To understand the context of this proposal, it's crucial to examine why such additional support for seniors and disabled Americans is being considered. One of the primary drivers behind proposals like this is the increasing cost of living, which disproportionately affects those on fixed incomes. Despite annual cost of living adjustments colas to Social Security and other benefits, many recipients find that these increases don't keep pace with their actual expenses. Key areas where costs have risen significantly include housing, healthcare, food, and utilities. For many beneficiaries, current benefit levels are insufficient to cover basic living expenses. According to recent data, the average Social Security retirement benefit is approximately $1,800 per month. The maximum federal SSI payment for an individual is $914 per month as of 2023, and SSDI payments average around $1,350 per month. These amounts often fall short of providing a comfortable standard of living, especially in areas with high costs of living. Recent years have seen significant economic challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic fallout, high inflation rates, stock market volatility, affecting retirement savings, and job market disruptions. These factors have created additional financial strain for many seniors and disabled individuals, some of whom may have depleted savings or lost additional income sources. If approved, a $3,200 payment could have significant effects on both individual beneficiaries and the broader economy. For individual recipients, $3,200 could provide debt relief, funds for home repairs or modifications, coverage for medical expenses, a boost to emergency savings, or improvements to overall quality of life. 
Many seniors and disabled individuals carry debt, often on high-interest credit cards, and this payment could help pay down such debts. The funds could be used for necessary home maintenance or accessibility modifications, cover out-of-pocket medical costs including prescriptions, co-pays, or medical equipment, or bolster emergency funds to provide a cushion against future financial shocks. Recipients could also use the money for items or experiences that improve overall well-being, such as better food, clothing, or modest recreational activities. On a broader scale, injecting $3,200 per recipient into the economy could have several effects. Much of this money would likely be spent quickly, stimulating local economies and potentially leading to job growth in various sectors. By providing a financial cushion, the payment might reduce the need for other forms of public assistance. However, a large influx of cash into the economy could also contribute to inflationary pressures, though the impact would depend on the total scale of the program. The path from proposal to law is often complex and influenced by various political factors. Understanding the current political landscape is crucial in assessing the chances of this $3,200 proposal becoming a reality. Proponents of the $3,200 payment argue that it's necessary to address the inadequacy of current benefit levels, recognize the unique challenges faced by seniors and disabled individuals, stimulate the economy through increased consumer spending, and fulfill a moral obligation to support vulnerable populations. Support for such a proposal might come from progressive lawmakers who advocate for expanded social programs, representatives from districts with high populations of seniors or disabled individuals, and advocacy groups for the elderly and disabled. On the other hand, opponents of the proposal might argue that the cost is too high, especially given current budget deficits, that it could contribute to inflation, that it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem, or that resources should be directed towards reforming existing programs rather than one-time payments. Challenges to the proposal could come from fiscal conservatives concerned about government spending, lawmakers who prioritize other economic issues, or those who believe in more targeted forms of assistance. As of my knowledge cutoff in April 2024, I don't have specific information about the current status of this particular $3,200 proposal in Congress. However, for a proposal like this to become law, it would typically need to go through several steps, including introduction as a bill, referral to appropriate committees, approval and reporting to the full chamber, debate and votes in both chambers of Congress, reconciliation of any differences. And finally, presidential signature or veto. The chances of approval would depend on factors such as the level of bipartisan support, the current priorities of congressional leadership, the overall fiscal situation and competing budgetary demands, and public opinion and advocacy efforts. Given the often contentious nature of budget negotiations, if the proposal gains traction, we might see compromises such as a reduced payment amount, stricter eligibility criteria, phased implementation over time, coupling the payment with reforms to existing programs, or offsetting the cost with spending cuts in other areas. To better understand the context and potential of the $3,200 proposal, it's helpful to look at similar initiatives, both past and present. The most recent precedent for large-scale direct payments to Americans was the series of COVID-19 stimulus checks in 2020 and 2021. While these payments were broader in scope than the proposed $3,200 payment, covering most American adults regardless of their participation in specific benefit programs, they set a precedent for direct government payments as a form of economic support. Other relevant initiatives include the Social Security Expansion Act, which proposes to expand Social Security benefits by increasing monthly benefits, adopting a more generous cost-of-living adjustment formula, and increasing the special minimum benefit for long-time low-wage workers. The SSI Restoration Act aims to update and improve the SSI program by increasing the benefit rate, updating and indexing income and resource limits, and eliminating penalties for married couples. While different from a one-time payment, these proposals demonstrate recognition of the need to enhance support for beneficiaries. Some states have implemented their own supplemental payments or cost-of-living adjustments for beneficiaries of federal programs. For example, California's Golden State Stimulus provided payments to low-income residents, including SSI recipients, and New Jersey provides a state supplement to federal SSI payments. These state-level actions could serve as models or inspiration for federal proposals. While the $3,200 proposal has garnered attention, 
it's worth considering alternative approaches that could address the same underlying issues. Instead of a one-time payment, some advocate for permanent increases to monthly benefit amounts. This could provide more sustainable long-term support but would likely face stronger budgetary opposition. Changing how cost-of-living adjustments are calculated, perhaps by using a senior-specific inflation index, could help benefits keep pace with the actual expenses faced by seniors and disabled individuals. Enhancing programs like SNAP Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or LEHEAP Low-Income Home Energy Assistance Program could provide targeted support for specific needs. Creating or expanding tax credits or deductions for seniors and disabled individuals could provide financial relief through the tax system. Rather than a universal payment to all beneficiaries, a system of supplemental payments based on financial need could target those most in need of additional support.